This presentation is part of a lecture series on the C++ programming language by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given on this slide. In the presentation that follows, I'm going to be talking about version control systems. In what follows, I'm going to be discussing version control systems. But before I can do this, I first need to introduce the notion of version control. So what exactly is version control? Version control is simply the management of changes to programs, documents, or other information. And version control plays a very important role in software development. In particular, we must be able to track how software changes over its lifetime. This is necessary for things like bug fixing, when a customer reports a bug in our software, there's probably many different versions of the software, software that we've shipped over time, and we need to know which particular version is the version that has the bug, because not all versions of the software are likely to have the same bugs. Version control is also important if we're doing concurrent development of multiple versions of the same software. In other words, you may have two different teams that are working in parallel on two different versions of the software. You want to make sure that you don't start mixing up between these developers' different versions of the code because they're likely to be not fully compatible with one another. Now we could have software developers manually maintain version information themselves, but this would be very error prone and therefore is impractical. Instead, we use version control systems to manage changes to software in a systematic and automated manner. And some examples of version control systems include things like the source code control system, the revision control system, the concurrent version system, subversion, mercurial, and Git. The first approach to version control that I'm going to discuss is what is known as centralized version control. Before attempting to explain what's meant by centralized version control, however, I first need to introduce some basic terminology. So there's two key terms on this slide I need to introduce. One is the notion of a repository, one is the notion of a working copy. So the repository is simply a database that contains all the versions of some information that's under version control, such as source code and documentation. The important thing to understand about the repository is it's all versions. Everything is in the repository. It's the complete set of data. On the other hand, a working copy is just a specific version of some information with which a particular user is working. So what's important to understand about the working copy is it's typically a very, very small subset of the information that's contained in the repository. Usually it corresponds to one version of some software that a particular developer is working with. In the case of centralized version control, there's only one copy of the repository in the system. Typically, it will be housed on some server, and then each software developer will then grab from the repository some particular version that they're going to work with, and this becomes stored as the working copy on that software developer's machine. So in a centralized version control system, there's only one copy of the repository that resides, resides on a server, and users, the individual users, the software developers, do not have their own local copy of the repository. They only have a working copy, which is only a very, very small subset of the information in a repository. Again, the working copy typically will correspond to some particular version of some software that the developer is working with. Some examples of systems that are centralized are CVS, concurrent version systems, and subversion. The other approach to version control that I'd like to discuss is what's known as distributed version control. And what sets distributed version control apart from its centralized counterpart is in the distributed case, everyone has their own copy of the repository. The repository is replicated. So you might still have a server in the distributed case just for convenience of access. A service, server can be easily accessed by many different people. So you might have a server which houses the repository. But in addition to this, each of the individual users who are working on their own machines, they also have their own copy of the repository as well. And then from this repository, they can then access subsets of this information, which would become their working copy. But the important thing to, to understand in the distributed case is that each user has their own local copy of the repository. Some examples of distributed version control systems are Git and Mercurial. Given that we have two different approaches to version control, namely centralized and distributed, one might wonder what are the advantages and disadvantages of each of these schemes relative to one another. As it turns out, distributed version control has many advantages over its centralized counterpart. In particular, distributed version control has the following advantages. 
In the case of distributed version control, most operations are local and extremely fast. This is because in practice, most operations only need information that is available in the local repository, which can be accessed very quickly. Furthermore, since most operations only need information that is available in the local repository, most operations do not require a network connection. This could be advantageous, for example, in situations where network connections are unreliable or unavailable. Another advantage of, dis advantage of distributed version control is greater robustness. Better protection against data loss is achieved as a result of replication of information across repositories. Moreover, increased resilience against network failures is achieved by ensuring that relatively few operations require a network connection. Another benefit of distributed version control is that it can be used for purely local changes. For example, a developer might want to use version control for all stages of their work, but not publish the intermediate stages of their work to others. Also, a developer might want to use version control for experimental work without being forced to make this work available to others. Lastly, another advantage, is, advantage of distributed version control is that changes can be easily shared with only select individuals before making the changes available to everyone, which can sometimes be desirable. With all of the above said, however, distributed version control does have a small number of disadvantages relative to its centralized counterpart. These disadvantages arise mainly from the replication of repositories that occurs in the distributed case. Since repositories are stored locally, more local disk space is required and the time required to initially replicate a repository can be significant if the repository is large. Since distributed version control has many key advantages over the centralized case, many of the most popular version control systems in use today are distributed.